Good morning, everyone. As always, place the cross on first. No matter what's going on in your life, you don't pray without ceasing. Seek God. You understand it's health to your bones, life to your soul. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. I'm going to start off by reading Psalm 36. You're going to see how it ties into the rest of the story, the rest of the scripture, anyway, that I'm going to give you today. Now, pay attention real closely to the first lines of this psalm. The transgressions of the wicked saith within my heart. The transgressions of the wicked saith within my heart. So, what he's saying is, the transgressions of the wicked saith talking about him talking about david say within my heart you see one thing about the wicked they love to call good evil which ties into what blasphemy against the holy spirit the transgressions of the wicked say within my heart that those is there is no fear of god before his eyes for he flattered himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful the words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He have left off to be wise and to do good. He devised mischief upon his being. He said of himself in a way that is not good. He abhorred not evil. So these are the things that are being said about David in regards to how evil he is. False witnesses. So blasphemy against the Holy Spirit got a lot to do with false witnesses too, right? You remember when Jesus was about to be crucified, false witnesses rose up against him. Calling him evil. Hmm. And they do it to his children too. If you live for God, they do it to you. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains of thy judgments are a great deep, O Lord. Thou preservest man and beast. How excellent is thy love and kindness, O God. Therefore, the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them to the drink of the river of thy pleasures. For with thee is the fountain of life and the light of Shall we see light? Oh, continue thy love and kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Let not the foot of pride come against me. That's another thing. We got to worry about being prideful. And let not the hand of the wicked remove me. There are the workers of iniquity fallen. They are cast down and shall not be able to rise. Oh, man. Let's go again. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Then they start bad mouthing him. He's evil. He's evil. He don't even hate evil. Wrong. I ain't finished yet today. Hope you got time. I do. Let's go over to Matthew chapter 12, starting with verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts. Wait, first, let me go back. Then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him. And so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, It is not the son, is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by the Beelzebub, the prince of devils. This goes hand in hand with Psalm 36. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. Or else how can one enter into the strong man's house and spoil his good except he first bind the strong man and then will he spoil his house he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad wherefore I say unto you all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man it shall be forgiven him but whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. 
Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth good things. And the an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by the words that thou shalt be justified, and by the words thou shalt be condemned. What he said? By your words shall you be justified, or by your words shall you be condemned. The only thing that can condemn you is your mouth. It's not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but what comes out of a man that defiles a man. I'm not finished yet. Hope you got time. I hope you have time today. Hmm. Mark chapter 5. They came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. What comes out of a man that defiles him. You know, he called them devils. A lot of times they called him a devil, but he called them devils. Why? From, from, from within them was spiritual wickedness. Their heart wasn't right. They couldn't seek the truth. Even though the truth was right in their face, they called the truth evil. Psalms 36. It said, there's a, my heart, the transgressor of the wicked says that I'm wicked. Hmm. Who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any to man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains, and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stone. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. What the first thing did he do when he saw Jesus? He ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice. And said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. So first of all, you know, first of all, the man never met Jesus before in the tombs. But the spiritual energy that was in him knew who Jesus Christ was. And they answered to him. Do you understand? And he asked them, why? What is he, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And not what goes into a man that defiles him, but what comes out of a man. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he said, answer, He's answering, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him. You understand? And besought him that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, All the devils, I one devil, all the devils sought him. The legion sought him. They would not destroy them. Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion sitting and clothed, and at his right hand mind, they were afraid. And they sought, they sought it, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Wow. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. 
How about Jesus suffered them not, but said for them, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord have done for thee and have had compassion on thee. I talked last week about, you know, people on their deathbed, like giving their life to Jesus. And I'm not saying it don't happen because I believe it happens. Let me, before I continue, let's talk about the story of the cross, the man on the cross. But you got to think about it. He, he said, deny me before men, I would deny you before my father, which is in heaven. This man opened, in his brief moment, he gave testimony that Christ is Lord by giving his life to Christ on the cross. Do you understand? So he met, fulfilled the requirements. A lot of times when God healed people, he tell them to tell people, show people, tell them what I've done for you. Like I said, don't wait to the end. In his case, he was lucky. You know, not lucky. It is what it is. He just happened to be on the cross with God and he didn't bad mouth him. He gave his life over to him right down the cross and he let the whole world know that he believed in Jesus Christ. You see the stimulation there? Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I commanded to you? In that moment, he was doing what the Lord commanded him when he accepted Jesus Christ and vouched for him on the cross. This man is innocent. We deserve what we got going, but this man is innocent. The other man, that wasn't the case with him. He called Jesus evil. You know, crows poked his eyes out. But he just possessed a man with devil that was I mean exercise demons of a man that was possessed with devils you see Satan don't cast out Satan he don't he's keep it there do you understand let's go over let's go over I ain't finished yet. I got one more quick story for you before I continue on and this one's real quick let's go to John chapter 19 chapter 13 verse 19 now I tell you before it come to pass that when it come to pass you may believe that I am he verily verily I say unto you that he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me now watch this what happens when Jesus had thus said he was troubled in spirit and testified and said verily verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me so if one of them start to betray him, what category does he fall in? Very, very, I say unto you that, like they receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So if Judas sought occasion to betray him, he didn't receive Jesus. Even though he was with him the whole time. But why? And then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom he spake. Now, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples who Jesus loved. Simon Peter said, therefore beckon unto him that he would ask who it should be of whom he spake. Now, why wasn't the devil cast out of Judas? Because Judas was not a true believer. So the devil remained. The devil had full control over him. Just like he was telling the, the Pharisees, the devil has control of you. Unless that devil get out and you believe, you're going to die in that sin. Hmm. Now, there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas and scared the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. How can you destroy the strong man? Then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. Hmm. That thou doest, do quickly. So after Satan entered into him, Jesus had power. He didn't cast Satan out of him. Why? Because Judas' heart was not right with God. He already did that act. He already betrayed him, basically denying him with his own mouth when he betrayed him. So Satan had free will to do and operate in his life. That's why when after 
the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus to him, Thou do it quickly. So Jesus told Satan, Go do what you're going to do. They answered him in the tombs. The devils did. Satan did what he asked him to do. Wow. That was a lot that I just covered right there, people. But there's a reason to it. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. People who are evil accept evil in their hearts and their souls. So they, they basically accept the devil. And anybody that looks good, who, who looks righteous and works for God, they hate. They despise. They don't want to listen to him. But the thing is, God just don't cast devils out. You see, first the thing you got to realize, the man that was tormented by the devils, he came and sought the Lord to be exercised. So it's a spiritual warfare going on in the body with the man in the tombs. Nobody could get it out of him. Maybe because half of the people that was trying to get him out of him were devils themselves. <laughs> so, but hey, he said, they told him, you cast out devil by the prince of devils. Well, who did the other people spread cast them out by? Hmm. Jesus was very smart. Very straightforward in what he said to people. Do you understand? Now, Psalms talks about it. 36. He said, by your mouth shall you be condemned. Or by your mouth shall you be justified. When Judas went and betrayed Jesus, he was no longer Jesus's. He said, if you receive me, you wouldn't mind. If you receive those that sent me, who I sin, you wouldn't mind. Judas never received Jesus Christ in his life, his whole heart. That's why Satan was able to maneuver through him and use him how he wanted to use him. And yet still Jesus gave the authority. Whatever you're going to do, do it. See you later, Judas. See you later, Satan. This is all part of the plan. The men in the tombs, they came down and worshiped and sought him. Why? Because the man... That was possessed by the devils Inwardly wanted to seek God And be healed And the devils could not do anything about it Because he wanted to be healed Read between the lines He wanted it The Pharisees didn't want to be healed Judas didn't want to be healed And when you get to that point Jesus just let the devil do what they want to do in your life. There you go. You got good and you got evil, people. There's no in between. There's no half in. It is what it is. You got one or the other, people. You had a spirit filled with the Holy Spirit or you filled with something else. And if you die with that unholy evil spirit inside you, you are going to hell. You have committed the blasphemy against the Holy Spirit's sin. Wow, ain't that frightening? To think that you've been working for God all this time and you was actually working for the devil? How can you bind a strong man? My cousin showed me a video the other day when a preacher was laying down his congregation on the ground and spanking them with belts. Well, I don't know what that's supposed to have done, but let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. Synagogues of Satan running around. You ever notice something? People feel with the Holy Ghost seem to jump up every time on cue at the same time what about healing what about all those things that 
Jesus talks about. You don't see that in the churches. But you see these demons and these devils operating in the spiritual realm because they're working together. <laughs> Showing signs and wonders. But nothing is being done. Nobody's even being delivered. Nothing is happening. Why? Because Satan cannot stand against himself. Either make the tree good or the fruit good or it's all going to be bad. And you would know them by their fruits. The strong man. Now, let's go back to a house. He said uh, the church is a spiritual house. Right? Let me pause and I will continue. 